hi if you are an nri then you should know about these five must have legal documents these documents are very helpful to make life easier and if you are staying abroad these documents are definitely going to help you and your family dependents in some or other cases so what are these five legal documents every nri must be aware about the importance about the procedure uh, and how it's going to be helpful so i'm going to just going to give you a small brief on these documents and maybe if i get a good feedback i will give dedicated video on these five important legal documents for nri so let's begin so document number 1 i'm going to talk is power of attorney this is the most important legal document and every nri must be aware about that and if possible they should create a power of attorney and give it somebody who is staying in india maybe their parents maybe their siblings or maybe some friend whom they can trust because what happen once you are abroad there are lots of things which is going on here and which require your presence now you cannot be present all the time but this power of attorney can help you to do a lot of thing you can de uh, delegate to somebody else and legally he can do all these things this may be management of your bank account management of your investment maybe your property and even this can be used to uh, buy or sell property on your behalf so lots of thing can be done by maybe by your parents or somebody who tr you trust so always before you leave the india it's always a better idea to create a power of attorney now the power of attorney are comes in different shape and size and they serve a different purposes but generally it is called a general power of attorney and the specific power of attorney so general power of attorney as it state it gives all the power and it can be helpful plus dangerous also so generally it is not advisable to give general power of attorney until unless somebody you can really trust and the second type of uh, power of attorney which is called specific power of attorney which has a specific purpose and it is very well defined that what the person whom is uh, you have given the power of attorney can do and what the things he cannot do right so always be sure always get these documents drafted by, from a professional lawyers we can also do a drafting of power of attorney for on your behalf because understand if you are giving it to your maybe parents that may be fine but again somebody else on their behalf uh um, maybe they can instigate your parents or they can uh somewhere they can make some uh you can say use of power of attorney on their behalf of course which may be um against your benefits so always always be sure before you give a power of attorney what is the purpose you are going to put what is the condition what is the limitation you want to put because i have seen most of time power of attorney people make from one fits all kind of formats and i have seen people typing it online also or making from some kind of uh, softwares which is not right because power of attorney very specific and very powerful document so always understand the power is the first word in the document that means gives a lot of power to the holder so always be sure what exactly kind of power you want to give the power of attorney holder so if you want to do any kind of consultation to that you can definitely put as a comment and my team will come to you so always as an nri have a power of attorney give it to somebody you trust and give them specific powers whatever you want to require put some limitations the on the things on the topics you do not want to be explored by the power of attorney holders or somebody else on their behalf so that's the first document legal document you should be aware and definitely you should uh, make use of that uh, most of the time i have seen the sailors goes um, on uh, their voyage and sometimes they are not even reachable over the phone in that condition definitely they have to give a power of attorney to their maybe spouses because in that case at least they can take a proper action maybe it require in the bank maybe require file it return maybe require uh, to manage the property or investment in all cases the power of attorney going to be very helpful so plan it well document number second so i'm going to talk about will now will is not impo is important for all the people either you are like aged or you are young most of time people think like we have seen in movie that will only comes into picture when somebody uh, feel like that he is done with the life right but this is not the case the will mm. is basically a document which can make um, life of anybody's dependent a uh, well you can say uh, easier than in the case the will is not aware uh, available so first thing is for first of course i'm talking about will from point of view of your parents so suppose you are going abroad always ensure your parents 
make a will well in time so that there should not be unnecessary confrontation between the beneficiary in absent of will because you understand if somebody uh, doesn't have a will then the matter has to be settled in the court court has to give order and it takes a lot of time lot of money lot of frustrations right and life goes out of life so better thing is this always encourage your parents to make a will when they are around you okay and same thing applies to all the people also you even you have to you should create a will i'm not saying it should be very big all everything you should make that uh, you are going to set up a foundation and all but at least the basic that who is going to be beneficiary in case you are not around so that your family doesn't have to run post to pillar to get what is basically theirs now understand if somebody doesn't have a will it the matter goes to court and all the settlement happen as per the hindu succession act and now you understand there are there may be almost every beneficiary from the family hierarchy maybe somebody doesn't want the things go that way so if you want to make it sure convince your parents also so that they can make a will and also you create a will for yourself also maybe a basic one but keep it it will be definitely going to make life of a family very easier to access the funds access the property access the you can say benefits when somebody is not around now third document i'm going to talk about is gift deed now i've seen in family generally lots of transaction keep happening people pay money for buying property people pay money for some investment for education of their kids grandkids so lots of money keep flowing from in a family so until unless the money is small 10 20000 50000 1 lakh like, that's not a problem but when somebody is giving you money a big money maybe 20 10 lakh 20 lakh 30 lakh to help you to buy a property abroad maybe for your fund for your for your studies maybe studies of your children anything like your parents are gifting you something or giving you some money right always make sure there is a gift deed i have seen people just pay money like that now what is the problem when you, when your parents pays you money just like that without any supporting documents the income tax comes into picture and there is a big problem now what happen see every person has their assets and generally asset generate some kind of income and that income has to be taxable in that person's name now what happen once i give say 10 lakh rupees to my wife and my wife puts in a mon- uh, that money in say for example in shares and she g- get some dividend or some capital gain that money according to income tax should be added to my account because that was my money on which my wife got the income same thing applies when your parents gives you some money you buy a property maybe abroad and then you put that money property on a rent and you start receiving a rent by if you go strictly as per the law as per income tax act that money belongs to your parents and anything you are earning on that should be added to your parents income and what happen when the income tax department puts this claim after 10 years as possible that way it will get a lot of problem second thing you may face challenge in your country also because there the tax department of that country may ask what is and how and why you receive such a big amount what is the nature of that what is the supporting document you have so always always it's advisable to draft a small simple gift deed it may be registered or may not registered that's not a problem but should be a written gift deed when your parents are transferring a big amount to you for any purpose it will save your parents also from addition of income it will save you also when you're going to make declaration in your country where you are residing now so just a small gift deed can make a life lot better put a lot of clarity on the kind of transaction you are getting into okay and it will safeguard you from getting into unnecessary tax related battles the fourth document i'm going to talk is settlement deed now the uh, once the property is distributed among the family members okay so generally what happen sometime this is just initial understanding people distribute property as per their understanding and i have seen most of cases there is no proper documents especially the signed and registered and this is the problem now understand there is a inherited house and you have two or three siblings and you want to distribute that maybe there can be good understanding between you and your sibling but there may not be same level of understanding between between your children and their children so always it's better when there is a distribution of property happening between the family there should be a written signed registered document that we call settlement 
agreement or settlement deed so simple whenever there is a distribution of assets which is common which is inherited better put it into writing get a settlement deed get everybody signed and get it registered it will help you also when you going to sell the property because you have a proper settlement deed and nobody can come back from past or from future to lay a claim on that property because it's well distributed and the settlement agreement or settlement deed is already signed and registered so even buyer will get a confidence that this is family property but well distributed there nobody can lay a claim now otherwise what happen i have seen lots of time people don't get into this kind of agreement they simply just settle something written on a common paper everybody share something and then everything they feel everything is fine but what happen see maybe the next generation will not agree on this somebody will come rise and say okay this is uh, not ac acceptable to me the whole property will go into a very lengthy litigation so always always if there is a distribution of asset happening in your family try to get a settlement agreement a settlement agreement properly drafted and signed by everybody everybody can carry a copy and this will help you in future also when you're going to sell a property as i told you buyer will get a extra confidence in that property you may get a extra good rate also and the same time nothing will come from past or future to haunt that settlement which is maybe mutually agreed with you so always always in a family settlement get a document drafted and registered don't forget to get it registered because if it is not registered then it doesn't have any legal validity it cannot be taken on par in a court of law so always get these kind of documents registered even there is a registration cost and all in that because that will be a very wise idea everybody will praise you maybe when you are not around now last document but not least important document is relinquishment deed or agreement now as i told you about the settlement agreement it's about within the family but what happen if there is a say different assets for example there are two inherited house so if legally i speak both uh, and suppose there are two son or two daughters they have equal share in both the properties right so as per law this this property should be divided like half both the property should be divided half but it become impractical right then two property are divided half it will be much easier that we allot one property to one daughter or son and another property to another one this way everybody has one full house instead of half houses each but in that case what happen once you creating this kind of agreement then one person has to forego his right he has to relinquish his right in that property then only he can get the right in another property so most of places i have seen that people don't take care of this okay they simply uh, get into a kind of agreement most of the cases it's oral like okay you keep this property i will keep that property but this doesn't solve the problem and later on in the future this may arise a legal dispute so always always when there is a property getting distributed and somebody is leaving his right to get right on in other property other part of property always ensure he sign a relinquishment agreement or deed where he specifically state that because i am getting some other property or right in other property i am leaving my right i am i am relinquishing my life should be given to the both the person who is Uh, surrendering his right plus who is getting the right both person should have a copy of that and that will help you in future to sell the property also and there will not be any legal dispute so these are five documents friends i told you hope you like all about this document if you want to understand more about this document how to draft it how I, we can help you to draft all this document definitely you can put a comment me or my team will come back and tell you so again i'm telling you if you are nri you must know about this five documents power of attorney first will was second uh, gift deed third then there is a settlement agreement then there is a relinquishment agreement or deed so uh, the agreement and deed there is no difference basically what happen when you sign an agreement before the settlement happens it's or before the uh, things are underway it's called agreement and once everything is done it is called deed so that's the only difference you can search on google also so that's all in this video friends hope this knowledge series this uh, the, the the kind of uh, knowledge i'm sharing here is going to help you full to you as an nri in uh, uh, all the documents or dealings uh, whatever you're doing and hope you are going to put some kind of feedback and comments if you want me to make video on any particular topic please let me know 
आई विल डेफिनेटली मेक अ वीडियो नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑन दैट टॉपिक टिल द टाइम थैंक यू हैव अ नाइस डे